We're here with Phil at Masterpiece Arms, and Phil's going to talk to us a little bit about one of their current chassis systems and some of the new products that they have coming out. Uh, Phil, what do you have right here? Well, John, this is our, our MPA 65BA, which is uh, a chamber in 65 Creedmoor. Uh, the basis of the system is our BA chassis, uh, which we manufacture in-house. Uh, there are a lot of, lot of features that are, uh, that are specific to a lot of different applications. In this case, uh, we, we heavily focus on more positional, long-range sniper type competition features in our chassis. Okay. We're heavily involved in the PRS series, and you'll see a lot of features in the rifle uh, that are kind of directed towards that application. Okay. Uh, some of the features you have in here, like one of the popular features we have on this system is the rotating barricade stop. And the system uh, is really designed for engaging barricades and providing the shooter with a very stable uh, method of engaging a barricade. A lot of shooters have problems with, uh, with shooting off a barricade because of the instability in building that position. Mm -hmm. And the rotating, the rotating system gives the shooter uh, the ability to locate the stop in different locations along the bottom of the chassis and be able to rotate to match the location of the barricade itself. Okay. Uh, we make a number of different versions of this barricade stop. Uh, really kind of depend on the application and the shooter preference. Well, it's very nice that you made this a, a quick release. So, as we all know, shooting PRS matches, all barricades are not created equal, and you may address a situation slightly differently. So I really like the fact that you can quickly and without any tools move that to wherever you need to go. Oh, yeah, and, and most of the time in a competition, a, uh, a stage uh, RO is not giving you the ability to go up and spend right. time on the barricade to get him prepared for the, you know, for that particular stage. They don't want you to, to kind of practice building the position, uh, so there's a lot of uh, planning on the fly. Huh. And so being able to give the shooter that flexibility in a very short amount of time, being able to go from one location to another, is something that was kind of important to that little design feature. Very nice. Uh, also on the on the back end of the chassis, we have a, a bubble level. Mm -hmm. So when the shooter is engaged with the sheet welded to the rifle, it's a simple glance down. Uh, to be able to make sure that the rifle is not canted. And of course, when you're shooting long range precision and you're in these unusual positions, you obviously want to make sure that the rifle is not canted so right. that your shots are going where, where it's intended to go. Um, the cheek riser is adjustable with a, with a thumb wheel. Uh, when the shooter gets it in position, if they want to lock it in, you've got these set screws that will clamp down on the, uh, on the cheek riser rods to lock it in position. Uh, same thing with the, with the length of pull that you have right here. So you have a thumb wheel to adjust the length of pull, and again, set screws in here that will lock that in place so you have no movement of the recoil plate. Okay. Uh, on this version here, which is, uh, is is an option that we actually include on all of our, our BA chassis is a monopod. Now this is something that's really not used very much in like a PRS series competition, mm -hmm. but for, you know, for building a rear support and not having a bag and being able to make adjustments you know, to the height of the monopod and being able to rotate for fine tuning certainly gives the shooter some you know some options uh, when building a you know building their rear position on the rifle. Right, and it looks like you've done a very good job of integrating that into the buttstock. So if you're not actually using it at the time, it's not in the way. Oh yeah. So many times we see them mounted on the bottom and it's always hanging out, it's catching on slings, catching on gear. But I like the fact that you guys have brought this up flush. Well, you know, I mean, a lot you can tell by looking at the design, it's got kind of a solid works uh, appearance to it. I mean, SolidWorks, in our opinion, is a very, very effective design technology to be able to kind of create design online, you know, on a computer, and make sure that the design is meeting the intent without having to take the time to go through and, and build your prototype and then find out you made a mistake. Right. So you, you just kind of you kind of see that. I mean, it's you know being able to go from the SolidWorks uh, from the computer, you know, to the machine, generate the code, produce the parts, and then see a finished product in a very short amount of time is is, is a pretty. Um, it's a pretty nice piece of technology. Well, it's a really elegant looking chassis as well. I like how you've gone through and done lightning cuts where they need to be and uh, done some uh, fluting and really attractive well, overall. Thank you. So, uh, magazine uh, it accepts AICS magazines? Yeah, it'll accept uh, either AICS or AW mags. Okay. And in the AICS, of course, you have AI mags, you have Accurate mag, Alpha mag. AccuMag, the new MagPole mags, they'll all fit within the MagWell. Okay, and uh, what what action options do you have available on it right now? Well, so we, we build both the chassis and the complete rifle. Okay. And on the complete rifle, we, we can either do custom builds where the customer will pick the action that they want to use, or if we're doing a standard build, we are either using a Stiller's or a Kelby's action. Okay. Um, and so we really, 
I mean, we the chassis themselves are designed, we have them for inlets for any number of the major uh, actions that are out there, that people are going to be utilizing with this kind of platform. Um, but on our standard builds that we're building in 6mm and 6.5 different chambering, 308, 300 Win Mac, 338 Lapua, and you know all variants within those calibers, uh, we, we, we can pretty much build anything. Okay, um, so wide variety of choices and they can either do the full turnkey rifle ready to go or get the chassis from you and build up their own system as yeah. well. And one of the, and one of the things, like, like this rifle right here is in a 6.5 Creedmoor. Uh -huh. And this rifle out of the box has a 3 8 MOA guarantee. And Very that's nice. a little bit unusual for an out of the box rifle to have that guarantee. Now what we do on this thing is we throw it for, in each of the calibers that we build these rifles, we'll throw it for a factory available match grade ammo. Mm -hmm. And so in this case it's a 140 grain Amax from Hornady, which also is the same ogive length as the new ELD. And so well, what we'll do is we'll throw it to give the appropriate amount of jump in between the ogive and the lands to match the kind of projectile that's being used in that factory match grade ammo. Okay. And so we kind of fine tune it a little bit, but we also give the customer some flexibility whether they want to use factory ammo, factory match ammo, or they want to do hand loads. And so the so the the uh, the throat length and the and the land position also is set up to where when they when they get their desired length of, of their cartridge overall length, it's not interfering with the magazine capacity. So it, it's kind of giving the shooter the ability to buy off the shelf high quality match grade ammo and get really good performance. If they want to fine tune it, then that's when they can start doing their hand loads. Which of course is is a really one of the biggest options of going with six five Creedmoor is because now you have an off-the-shelf factory ammo and you have a rifle that you can roll without having any reloading experience whatsoever. Oh yeah, it's, it's, a, so. it's, a, it's a great transition. So I mean a lot of like a lot of our customers will start out you know with some good factory match grade and then as their experiences grow and their desire to get better performance and you know going from 3 8 to a quarter ammo 8 is a challenge but it can be done. Mm -hmm. And with the technology that's out there and the knowledge base that's available you know, for a, for a novice or semi-experienced shooter to be able to gain that knowledge in a short amount of time uh, is, is, is pretty amazing. You know, the, yeah. the, the technology jump recently has been phenomenal in being able to get really good precision you know, out of a, basically an off-the-shelf rifle. So now the big question is, uh, package like you have right here, what is the retail price? for $3,150 without okay. the optic. So for, for a full custom rifle, a very reasonable price yes. to be able to get that kind of accuracy with factory match ammo. That, that was kind of the design intent, is an out of the box, very high precision, kind of custom build quality type rifle where a customer may not be have the desire to wait for an extended amount of time to have the build completed, mm -hmm. or they can just buy the rifle from Masterpiece Arms and have ridiculously good performance right out of the box. Okay. Now we've got a different product that is new for this year, correct? That's correct. What do we have here? Okay, so this is the uh, the MPA BA Lite. Okay. And you know we've had a lot of requests since we came out with our, our standard BA rifle and chassis system to come out with a a lighter weight, uh, more transportable rifle system. Of okay. course, our, our standard build. You know, the, by the time you put a, an optic and a mount and a magazine, you're 15, 16 pounds. Yeah. Uh, not something that somebody is going to want to pack in the backcountry for a five-mile hike. <laughs> so, uh, so we came out with a BA light. Uh, the basis of it is our BA light chassis. Uh, the weight of the chassis is 2.9 pounds, as compared to 5.4 pounds for our standard chassis. Okay. So it's significantly lighter. Yes. Uh, the fore end is shorter. The width is thinner. The height in here is shorter. Uh, there's been some skeletonizing done to the bet stock. Uh, we have gotten. We've removed some of the components that added maybe subtle amounts of weight, but still trying to get the chassis weight to where it's below three pounds. That was kind of our magic number. Uh, so you, you can see the basis of the buttstock is very similar to our existing BA. But you see some lightning cuts in here. There's an absence of the thumb wheel for both the cheek riser and length of pull. Uh, they're still adjustable and set the location set by the customer. So what he would do is he would get the cheek riser put in the right position, and you've got these two set screws in here that lock down onto the rods for the cheek riser assembly. Same thing for the length of pull. You get your length of pull set, and then you clamp down the set screws and everything's locked in place. Okay. Uh, it still has the notch in here for attaching the monopod, although that's not like standard equipment on that particular chassis, but if a consumer wants that, he can add that to the build. Okay, very nice. And so a couple other things we're gonna have, like this one doesn't have it here, but, uh, but all of the BA light uh, chassis will have a notch cut in the front below the barrel channel to attach a spigot mount. 
Okay. So if the shooter wants a lightweight platform, but he is really after long range precision and wants to increase the distance from his rear support to the bipod in the front, the spigot mount will increase that distance from the current pick rail uh, to the spigot mount pick rail by about three inches. So okay. it'll really kind of give an extended distance between the front and rear support of the rifle, you know, for shooters who are looking for that type of performance. Really nice. So it seems like you can start out with a really lightweight, easy to handle platform, and then you can tailor it to your specific needs. Maybe if you decide that you don't need to go ultra lightweight, but you want a few more options, uh, Absolutely. that's something you can throw on. And so, and so we're doing this obviously as, as, a, as, a, as a standalone chassis. So if a customer wants to utilize his existing barrel to action, he can just buy the chassis in any number of different inlets that we do, or we also do the complete rifle. And when we and when we're looking at the you know the configuration of the barrel length, contour, caliber, and chambering for all the potential hunting applications that were out there, I mean our list of SKUs would have been enormous. So the way that we provide this rifle is is we have one model, okay. and then the customer picks the caliber, the trigger, the trigger pull, the barrel length, contour and all the internals here for whatever kind of, of, of projectile that they're going to be shooting. So if it's mainly a hunting projectile and caliber, they, they get to pick what choice they want. So whether they're shooting a 6.5 or a 7 millimeter or a 280 Ackley Improved or a 300 Ultra Mag, whatever, I mean, we will chamber the, the, the barrel and create the contour and the link based on what the application is. Okay. So I mean, it's really more of a custom build application. But because there's so many different uh, you know, the, the hunting applications are so wide and vast, we didn't really want to kind of shoehorn ourselves into some specific limitations where a consumer may want something a little bit different. And because, you know, we, like, we, like, we make the barrels in-house. I mean, we do the drilling, the reaming, the rifling, the hand lapping, the stress relieving, the contouring, the chambering. We, we do all that internally. The limitation is going to be the chamber reamer. If there's a chamber reamer made for it, we can create that barrel. So Excellent. we have twist rates and, and basically half inch increments all the way from one in six out to some ridiculously slow rates. And, you know, it, it, um, it's pretty exciting. And we're, you know, we, we were a little, you know, of course we've done so well with this platform. There was always some question about, okay, well, how is this going to be perceived in a hunting application? And the response that we have gotten so far has been phenomenal. I mean, it's been, it seems, I think it's going to be a very popular item for us. Okay, and uh, for the BA Lite, uh, the configuration that you're holding right there, what kind of price point? Twenty nine ninety nine. Okay, and uh, if a guy wants to order one, how far ahead of hunting season does he need to get in line? And well, that's <laughs> that's kind of a moving target, and it really okay. kind of depends on our backlog. I mean, because you know we because we make the barrel and the chassis in house, which are typically two of the three long lead times for building a custom rifle. Uh, because we do that in-house, we have some lead time flexibility. We're not having to wait on anyone uh, for another supplier to be able to provide those items. So typically our lead times are going to be significantly less uh, than it would be from a precision rifle builder. Okay. And uh, if a guy wants to just purchase the chassis itself to add to his current rifle, uh, what kind of price are we looking at? $699. A very reasonable price, I think, for the options that you have there and the ability to kind of expand and set it up the way you want. Uh, now, you did mention the spigot mount. Just to clarify on that, is it an AI type spigot or what kind of? It's, uh, it's, it's our own design. Okay. So it'll, it'll, ha it'll have an, uh, an Auberon slot here in the front. Uh, you will slide the spigot mount into the chassis. You will have two flathead cap screws that will that will basically pull the spigot mount down onto the chassis. Okay. You will take this pick rail off of the existing chassis, put it on the spigot, and then that's how you'll be able to gain that increased length. Okay, very nice. So again, a ton of options, uh, fairly lightweight system. Looks like a, a really great platform. Oh yeah. Uh, and I think you have one other uh, interesting piece that we were talking about. Yeah, so this, this is a, a stock design to house a suppressor. Okay. So, with the, with the growing popularity of suppressors in the market and the different applications that people are using suppressors, whether it be hunting or sound reduction or what have you, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's a part of the market that is really doing well. The downside to a suppressor is the additional length that it adds to the end of the rifle. Okay. Whether you're trying to fit it into a gun case or you are going to be using it for a hunting application and you want to pack it into your backpack, you know, do you really want a rifle that's 54 inches long hanging out above your head as you're walking through? 
the woods or the country or wherever you're going for you to engage your game. So the way this thing is designed is when the shooter is not utilizing the rifle, he would remove the suppressor from the end of the barrel, uh, whether it be a screw on or a QD mount. He would take the recoil plate off of the back of this suppressor butt stock. He would slide the suppressor down into it. He would replace the recoil plate, as you see right here, and then he folds the stock over. So you have a side folding stock that would have the suppressor housed into the butt stock. And, you know, it's something that the, when the idea was presented to us by an industry associate, we were a little bit not convinced of the, of the validity of the design. But the more we thought about it, I mean, we think it's really got a lot of application benefits. So, uh, so it's designed really to be used on any of our BA, both the BA Lite and the standard BA chassis system with the way that this dovetail engages or these tabs engage the uh, the main chassis body. Okay. It's really going to be more utilized on the BA light, uh, but it does give it does give our customers that level of flexibility. Okay. And uh, I notice on this model it does not have a butt pad, but if you actually purchase one, there will be a. Butt oh yeah, pad there'll, on. there'll be a recoil a recoil pad on it. This this is a prototype. This is an advanced prototype, but not the final production model. So there'll be some still some subtle changes to it. Um, but the basic configuration will be pretty much what you see right here. And what diameter suppressors will it accept? Inch and a half and below. Okay, so if you have an inch and a half below, uh, it'll be good to go. And you mentioned there was going to be a spring set up in it so that the suppressor's not rattling around. That, in that's there. correct. So the, on, in this plate right here, you'll have a spring housing that will hold the spring in place. Uh, there are also some additional holes on the bottom of the main extrusion. And that is designed for two purposes. So if you have, like, let's say you have a long suppressor. And when that thing is sticking out that far, all right, well, what that'll do is that'll lock in place. Okay. That also provides flexibility and length of pull. So if you know if, if the shooter's custom, uh, preference is to have that length of pull, then you have a pin that goes through the spring mechanism that locks it into the main the, you know to the main buttstock body. So it, it really provides flexibility on the length of the can that's going inside the buttstock, mm -hmm. and also for the shooter's preference on the length of pull. Okay. So you really have uh, quite a few options with it. And of course, uh, having had to stick a full-size suppressed rifle in the trunk of a compact rental car to drive to a match, <laughs> I can I can feel the pain on that. I don't I don't hunt like that, but having to having to crunch everything into the trunk of a compact car, uh, I can definitely see the utility of a setup like this. Yeah, we're so. pretty excited about it. We, we've gotten a very good response, it, and it's interesting. We've we've had a lot of questions about being able to adapt this concept to other rifle platforms. Uh, with you know, um, with some SBRs and again being able to you know to shrink the overall length of the package and transportation mode, um, we are looking at having interfaces to other uh, to other rifle configurations. Haven't really gone down that road in full detail yet, but it is something that we are looking at. Okay, excellent. Well, we'll definitely be looking forward to it. And thank you very much for uh, taking the time to My talk pleasure. to us on that. My pleasure. Thank you.